In this video, we're going to be in this video, we're going to begin creating a new custom widget, a media listing widget. In the process, we'll get an introduction to the In this video, we're going to begin creating a new custom widget, a media listing widget. In the process, we'll get an introduction to creating and managing repeater widgets and learn about the repeater dataset, repeater interactions, and repeater styling palettes. In this video, we're going to begin creating a new custom widget, a media listing widget. In the process, we'll get an introduction to the repeater edit view and learn about the repeater dataset, interactions, and styling palettes. Now we're going to create a media list using the new Axia 7 repeater widget. We'll use this to showcase our books. A point to note for 6.5 users, the table widget is not adaptive, so if you want adaptive tabular data, the repeater is the way to go. Let's add a new custom widget to our library. Name it. And open it. <coughs> Let's now drag out a repeater widget from the default widget library into the top left of the canvas. It's in the common folder. It's worth noting at this point that you can create folders for our custom widget library too, in the same way that the default library has three folders, common, forms, and menus and tables. We can define groups of widgets in custom libraries to make them easier to work with. Okay, so we are looking at a default repeat widget. First things first, let's add a name, media list. Now the astute among you will have noticed something unusual in the interactions tab. That's right, there's a case already in there by default. It says on item load, set text on shape to item dot column one. What this case is doing is setting a text value to a widget which is contained within the repeater. This raises an interesting point. What we're looking at here on the canvas is the repeater after this case has been evaluated. The repeater widget is the only widget that effectively evaluates an interaction case within Axure. You do not have to run a preview to see the effect that this case has. This situation is necessary because it would be really rather laborious to have to run the prototype every time you wanted to see how the repeater is rendering. This initially takes some getting used to. So the repeater widget comes ready populated with some default data, i.e. these numeric values 1, 2 and 3. The case you can see here is what loads these values into the repeater. Let's dive into the repeater edit mode and look at how this default content is loaded. OK, so the first remarkable thing is that we just saw three boxes with numbers in. However, now we only see one with no numbers in. Well, that's because inside the repeater, we see what the repeater looks like before the values are assigned and repeated. And what you see in the hosting canvas is the repeater after the values are assigned to widgets and repeated with the on item load case. OK, now you're thinking, why is it repeated three times and where do these numbers come from? Well, the content of the repeater or the repeater data set, as it's called, we find at the bottom of the user interface. There are three repeater specific tabs. Repeater data set. This is where we put data. Repeater item interactions. The cases in here define how the data set is applied to widgets in the repeater edit view. And repeater style. These are settings for styling the repeater as a whole as opposed to individual widgets embedded within the repeater. Let's look at the repeater data set first. 
This looks familiar, doesn't it? Yes, it's just like an Excel spreadsheet for storing data. Data that the repeater will repeat across the page for us. You can see the first column contains the three default numeric values we saw repeated earlier. Let's add another row to this first column by double clicking so we can edit the cell. Four. And let's go back to the media list tab. We can now see this numeric value added to the repeater in the media list widget tab. We should now be starting to get an idea of how the repeater works. Let's now look at the repeater item interactions to fathom how the dataset finds its way into the widgets on the canvas. We have a case attached to the on item load event. And yes, this is the same case as you see when you select the repeater in the media list canvas. It is duplicated here. So what's this case doing? It's an on item load case. So it's triggered when an item is loaded. Let's clarify what an item is, shall we? An item is a row that we just saw in the repeater data set. So currently we have four items in our data set. So this on item load case is being run four times. There's a set text action on this on item load event and it's being performed on the only widget we can see on the canvas, this unnamed rectangle here. And it's setting the text to this value item.column0. What is item.column0? Well, let's refer back to our dataset tab again. And here we find a column in our dataset called column0. We have four data items in column zero, hence we see the unnamed rectangle repeated four times as dictated by the size of our data set. Admittedly, this is difficult to get your head around because of the default names we are working with here. When we start using real data, it will make much more sense, hopefully. If you Google Axia Repeater API, you will find a lot of useful references. For your information, API is an acronym for Application Programming Interface. Lastly, let's take a quick look at the Repeater Styling tab. This is where you can set some of the visual styling for our repeater, like how the repeaters lay out the cells in our repeater, either vertically or horizontally. More on this shortly. Uh, we can choose the background color. We can set up pagination, i.e. how many items we want displayed per page. We can also set the spacing of the rows and columns. So the purpose of these three tabs can be summarized like so. One, the repeater data set. This is for managing the content or data that we want to repeat. Two, repeater item interactions. These options define how the data set will be applied to the widgets we place in the repeater edit view. Three, repeater styling. This tab has visual styling options for the repeater widget as a whole. Next, we are going to start customizing our repeater with some more useful data and creating some more widgets to display our data. It should make a lot more sense when we start naming our data columns and widgets with meaningful labels.